Good day viewers, welcome back to Erongo Talk. My name is Michelle Navatisis and you know today is all about education. So today we're going to have some news for you and some weather and as well as the interview that we'll be having with the CEO of the Dome, Farnes Engelbrecht, which is the part two. So stay tuned for our calendar day as it is adoption day today. Viewers, if you're wondering why it's so colorful today, it's because we're at Independence Park here down south. So we're very playful today and I feel like a kid again. So now for our news. Namibia Dry Dock and Ship Repair Nam Dock in Valves Bay is offering apprenticeship bursaries for dynamic young Namibians wishing to pursue studies in technical vocational education. The minimum requirements are as follows. Applicants should be Namibian citizens aged between 18 and 35 years. They must also have a JS, JS degree 10 points with 23 points in six subjects with an E symbol in English, Mathematics and Physical Science or an SSC O grade 11 with 18 points in six subjects with an F symbol in English, Mathematics and Science or an SSC O grade 11 new curricula with 20 points in six subjects with an F symbol in English, Mathematics and Physical Science. Now the bursaries cover registration, tuition and stationary apologies, transport to and from if outside Valvers Bay, hostel accommodation and a monthly living allowance. Now the closing date for the applications is 26 November with the following 25 positions available as from 2022. Four national vocational certificate in welding and fabrication which is from level 2 to 4. Four times boiler making level 2 to 4. Four times fitting and turning level 2 to 4. Four times fitters for machinery and four times general electrical level 1 to 3. One times diesel mechanic level 1 to, one to 3. And four times carpentry and joinery level 1 to 3. Now on our second news. The annual athletics championship sponsored by the Pupkovitz Foundation and organized by the Athletics Development Club takes place at the Veneta Stadium on 22 and 23 December. The event is open to athletes from schools, clubs or private athletes as well as para-athletes aged between 6 and 19 years. The competitors compete on different days and athletes between 6 and 12 participate on 22 November, December Apologies, and those between 13 and 19 and senior compete on 23 December. Now entries will be done differently each day. To enter for the competition on 22nd December, WhatsApp Athletics-22 to 81 Those wanting to participate on 23 should WhatsApp Athletic-23 to the same number. Now the entry fee is $50 Namibian dollars and every athlete will be allowed to compete in their own gear. If an individual enters through their school, they should wear school attire and if it's a private entry, then any sports gear will be allowed. President of the Swakopmund Athletics Deve Development Club, Henny Horn said. He emphasized that the championship is organized for development purposes to identify talent and to train athletes by providing them with an opportunity to participate. 
Now in our third news, Seaside Primary School in Valves Bay held their first ever graduation ceremony for their Grade 7 learners. This is the first year that Grade 7 classes were added to the school since its inception in January 2017. Now the school is home to 1,419 learners with 144 grade sevens who are accommodated in four classes. Principal Emily De Mula said that said that the idea behind the ceremony was to appreciate the years this learner spent at Seaside and to prepare them for the next stage for their education. You are ready and more than able to carry the torch that we bestowed upon you. You have been a light and a pleasure to teach this past three years. We are very proud of you. Always remember to be kind, be a good friend, look out for one another, stay out of trouble, follow your dreams and always believe in yourself she said now viewers if you'd like to read more about these stories please don't forget to visit our website on www.erongo.com.na i repeat www.erongo.com.na Another focus area is um, our academies, sport academies, and you've mentioned uh, you've mentioned Bradley's name. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have some athletes now in our program that are uh, that uh, are in the program part of the Olympians program that we we run here. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Um, Namibia doesn't have a lot of people. Um, so they have to do something differently, otherwise they can never really compete with what's happening in the rest of the world. I believe Namibia needs a plan for sport yes. uh, and uh, a philosophy, a long-term athlete development philosophy. Mm -hmm. And just to give an example on that, and sorry, it's, uh, I think it's something that is very important. Is mm -hmm. uh, Australia in nineteen seventy-six. Um, at the Montreal Olympics, yes. uh, one five, they won five medals. Not one was gold, only five medals. Okay. They decided that they have to do something um, and they adopted the long term of the development philosophy. That means they the one thing that they understood at that time is an athlete that performs at Olympic Games, there's a 10,000 hour rule. That means that you have to train about 10,000 hours intensely and doing the right things if you want to compete with the people that were actually athletes that won medals. So they implemented that in 2000. So they started the Australian Institute of Sport in 2000 and in, uh, in, um, yeah, in, in, in 1980 they started with that and in 20 years later in 2000 they won 58 medals from 5 to 58. Mm -hmm. Only by implementing long-term athlete development, so the right things needs to happen with the athletes, and at the right time. Yes. We have um, seven athletes of various sport codes in the dome that, in the age groups in the world, are top in the top 20 mm -hmm. and so on. Um, the athletes that's going to win medals in four and eight years from now, they're sitting, still sitting in the school. Yes. They're still, still, uh, still in school. Mm -hmm. and, and if they want to compete with, with athletes uh, from other countries, they actually have to do the same amount of work that these athletes are doing presently. Yes. Uh, and so they need to be in a program. They need to be uh, in a program that they do the right things at the right time, get the right things. And, the, and that is the, the, the philosophy that we've adapt, adopted here at the Dome. Mm -hmm. And that's a Bradley is part of that. Yes. And uh, Kiana is part of that. And mm -hmm. we have high jumpers here that is amazing athletes but they're still in in primary school but they have the potential because they're, they're world class already they have the potential in a couple of years time from now to win medals if you do not put them in a program like that then unfortunately they will battle to really really make it so that's why um, the high performance center is so important the sport the academies are so important mm -hmm. 
We've also um, uh, started a program, the Gap Year program, and that's for school leavers. Yes. And that is a program that uh, helps children, helps school leavers to make better decisions. So if, uh, during the year, and they are nearing the end of that year now, um, we um, there's a couple of areas that we we cover in the program. So it's a it's a full time program. We have 17 students at the moment uh, in that program and we're recruiting now for next year but they they have adventure as one of their uh, modules yes. so on a monthly and uh, every month there are excursions they start when they start here at the dome they went to the in the desert for five days they came back um, and so they have these adventures is if it is not uh, the sea, it is in the desert, yes. it is in the mountains. They have entrepreneurship training that helps them to discover who they are, their talents and so on, so that they can take better decisions about their future. Uh, we have hospitality training mm -hmm. here, we have life coaching mm -hmm. um, to prepare them better. We have sport education, so we have a partnership with FitPro in South Africa. Um, we have a national diploma for um, fitness instructors as yes. well as other qualifications so yeah so we give them and we do media and um, social media and marketing uh, that's part of it so yes. so there's a lot of things that we try and help them so that they can take make better decisions yes. so they, those are the the main focus areas other thing is uh, the dome, we need to be relevant, so the, com the community is important. Mm -hmm. That's where, why we are in close partnership with the municipality, so we yes. do a lot of things with the municipality and, uh, and so on. We even now have our own street kids program, mm -hmm. so we have every, and we use sport as our media. And how do each? Yeah, every, every Wednesday. Uh, around three o'clock, if you, you come around, you will see there's, a, uh, I think it's now just over 20 kids now, yes. from small, very small. Then they come here and then they play soccer. So we use sport as a medium. Yes. <coughs> they're children, they love to play. Mm. They, and they are actually a lot of talent. So they are here and then, then the entrepreneurs, a part of the entrepreneurs factory, some of the um, entrepreneurs they are, are involved in the program. And we are taking, a, a, and that's what we do when it comes to entrepreneurial thinking. Yes. Street kids, uh, they, they, they are a problem. So yes. we take that opportunity, we take that as an opportunity. We create a program around that because they have everything. If you want to design a business, you can easily design a street kids business now. Because you have you have investors because people are emotionally involved so you will not have a problem to get people involved if yes. you have a proper program yes. we design the program that's typically the product we have jockeys it's people with passion that will drive for that we have a demand you can look in town how many street kids are out on street yes. so you have all the components of a business mm -hmm. so you only have to change your attitude and your mentality to it and suddenly that becomes a business yes and now there's sustainability in it uh, this the, the the street kids now they start to understand uh, they're actually not street kids anymore they are street wise yes. so we change their understanding mm -hmm. so a lot of things that we do so, um, so that's part of the community outreach and so on. We have a couple of others as well. One of the things that we've decided to do at the Dome is the Dome cannot be exclusive for a few people. So we've really opened the doors. Um, we make it uh, very accessible. Uh, we're working closely with the clubs because we uh, believe that clubs are the backbone of sport. Um, so we work closely with the clubs to invite uh, uh, sports people to the dome, yes. and, and so, so yeah. And at the moment, uh, there are good things happening. You've asked about the staff. We've uh, the the staff is um, is very important mm -hmm. uh, for us. We've we've said that the dome it needs to be an ecosystem. So there's no hierarchy. There's no. We've moved away from that. We've said. Um, the culture in the dome is the one thing that we, the, the culture that drives everything in the dome consists of four elements that is a non-negotiable. So mm -hmm. the first one is equal value, so you, 
you, uh, we are all equal in value, different in responsibilities and those kind of things, equal in value. Yes. Uh, so and that made a huge change towards the respect that people have for each other and how they treat each other and how they see each other. The other one is authenticity. I absolutely believe that uh, everyone has something very special. And uh, that's part of the self-discovery, that's part of the sports program, of the staff, of everything, is to help you to discover that passion that you have. Because if I have, and I, my staff, I call them jockeys. Jockey mm -hmm. is somebody with passion, understands what they love to do. I never have to look over their shoulders yes. because I look after the job. They look after it because I love what they're doing. The other one is um, surf. We are here to surf. Uh, so we surf in various ways. We, so that's important. You surf with your gift, with your, with your talent. You surf, we need that. Yes. And then the other one is um, ownership. So you take ownership of your space. So that makes that we can operate in the in ecosystem that everybody is dependent on each other. So it's, it's, it's kind of challenging, but it's very rewarding. And what is happening in the dome, and uh, the fruit of that is, um, yeah, um, very, very, uh, yeah. Rewarding. It's very rewarding experience. Yeah. There's uh, one thing that came to my mind as you were speaking about the dome is, 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 is that professionalism starts with a mindset. Yeah. You know, it's something that, that, that you don't need to, to cultivate it, you, you need to, to just begin with it. Yeah. You, know, you, you don't need to compete on a professional level by being a professional. You need to be the professional Absolutely. and then you take it to that level. Yeah. So uh, the dome is actually filling that void. Because I believe there was a void. There was not there was an empty space, there was no connector for, for, for our athletes to, to really step up to the next level. Uh, the consistency, the guidance, because what we refer to is a whole complete type of product, if I can, if I can put it like that. That will mold an athlete, that will, that will bring us the next Pietras Masalinge, Christine Mboma, mm. uh, Harry Simon, uh, Frankie Fredericks, you know, and uh, I, 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 I'm excited by, by what you've told me because it's, 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 it's about creating jobs and it's also about creating our future generation of sports stars. Yeah. With the, with the um, with sport, um, that's, my, that's my opinion, is that um, the pool of talent, Namibia has talent, but our pool of talent very small yes. in, in, if you compare it to other countries. So we have to do something different. We have to adopt, uh, we have to, to, to change our programs to make it very Namibia. Yes. Um, and, and I think there is a missing link or there is a key that we have that we can do things that other, other uh, countries uh, that they do not do. Uh, if we look at the, uh, and that's athlete centered, so if we look at an athlete and we focus, we know that we only have a few, and um, if we can help them to discover their authenticity, the absolute talent, if we help them with that, and with a lot of life coaching, a part of that as well, and so, and they understand what they have and who they are. Um, and you do all the other things right as well. Then we have something that can. Then we have something that, with a few talent, with a few athletes, we can do so much more. So I think with, and, and entrepreneurship is, a, is an amazing tool to unlock true potential. Mm -hmm. And um, and and I think by applying entrepreneurship in athletics, by applying it in other sport codes. Uh, and I see what is happening now. I see with the athletes that, that, that are in the program what is suddenly happening with them. Just an example, Bradley. Bradley uh, uh, is in the dome for a while now. And when uh, the municipality, um, they are sponsoring his development. Yes. So they came and said, we will do 10 entrepreneurs and we will sponsor an athlete. 
um, um, and we decided on Bradley. He's uh, he's the the guy that we really want to put in the in the program. So we put him in the entrepreneurship training program as well. There are a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So Bradley every day controlled environment. So Bradley watch what he needs. We look after the supplementation and so on. Mm -hmm. um, his conditioning is according to his specific needs and we, his now in terms of long term of new development. We have an exceptional coach there in Ula, she's our director of sport. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then um, life coaching. So we have a psychologist, a sports psychologist that deals with the, the, the softer issues, the life issues, mm -hmm. and so, so helping with that. Of course, his background. There's a lot of baggage and he has to deal with that and he has now the support to do that. And then we, we uh, the, the, and the training on the, the sport specific training, so you have a great coach and his conditioning and everything and then the entrepreneurship training. When he enters the program, Bradley was, and, and they warned us and said this, Bradley is very shy, Bradley will not speak uh, in front of people. Um, we don't I don't really know if he's going to fit in with the entrepreneurs and this program and so on. It took uh, about two months and one of Bradley's passions, and he's busy and he has designed his, his, his uh, new business around it, he now is a motivational speaker. Yes. So, for, and he, so this, uh, you cannot believe what happened to him. And that was just part of the process of, of self-discovery. So he's, he, is, he has changed so much and it has a huge impact on yes. not only self-esteem but on his performance as well. So, so that's a lovely, mm. it's just an example of, of what I it think, can mean. I think you are successfully transforming lives, Namibian lives. And uh, I think for that uh, we as uh, residents of the coast should be extremely grateful for, for those unique opportunities that you are providing uh, to all uh, residents of Congo and the rest of Namibia. But uh, if, if we may conclude, otherwise we're gonna, we're gonna yeah. stay here until next year because uh, I, I love what I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from you. What would your message be to Namibians? Um, don't be so, don't be small-minded. I think uh, for me, um, uh, for me, the the, the, th the thing that I realised in Namibia is that Namibia is an has amazing people, it's an amazing country, uh, but uh, Namibia does not believe in the awesome potential that that this country and this people has. Yes. It's a very small country minded in terms of many things, and it's not a bad thing, but. But it is something that, um, it's in terms of sport, in terms of uh, new ideas, in terms of creating things, is Namibia uh, should not be dependent, so much dependent, on other countries uh, for certain things and so on. The, the potential that's in Namibia is immense. Uh, but I think, in terms of, for me, is to change the understanding, not to be so small minded. Yes. Uh, we can be much more than we are at the moment. Just other um, interesting thing that is also happening um, is we've concluded a, a, an agreement with MTC. Mm -hmm. um, so MTC has, uh, uh, has recognized what we are doing. They want to be part of this. So the dome now, uh, they took up the title sponsorship. Uh, so the dome will now be known as the MTC dome, mm. and um, and uh, uh, they have a lot of of um, things. And part of their strategy is to to um, uh, to use the dome in terms of programs and so on. Because they have they are the sponsor in Namibia mm. that has given the most money to sport. Yes. So the money is not so much the problem. It's just to channel the money that is available to the right programs. Mm -hmm. And this is part of a bigger strategy exactly to do that. So they've seen what is happening at the Dome and they like what they see. Uh, they were willing to associate with the Dome and now they are the, now we're partners. Yes. Now we have a, 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 spot, a title sponsor. Very good. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Nabre. It's been a joy listening to you. And uh, yeah, what 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 more can one say? Then, uh, if you want to be successful, get to the top. <laughs> yes. Take this ring and put it on a perfect smile, a perfect fit. We can go wrong. Hey, let's stop the world. A study tip I would like to share with you all is that you should always plan your time wisely and whenever you feel like giving up, always remember and ask yourself why you started and what you really want. And always remember, nothing comes on a silver plate. You have to work hard for it. I thank you. In our weather for today, in Walfish Bay, the sun rose at 0609 and was set at 1925. Walfish Bay is expected with a maximum temperature of 20 degrees with a minimum of 12 and a maximum of 19 degrees predicted for tomorrow. A southwesterly wind will prevail with a speed of 15 kilometers per hour. In Swakopmund, the sun rose at 0610 and was set at 1925. Swakopmund is expected with a maximum temperature of 18 degrees with a minimum of 13 and a maximum of 18 degrees predicted for tomorrow. A southwesterly wind will prevail with a speed of 13 km per hour. In Handys Bay, the sun rose at 0612 and was set at 1935. Handys Bay is expected with a maximum temperature of 18 degrees with a minimum of 14 and a maximum of 18 degrees predicted for tomorrow. A south south westerly wind will prevail with a speed of 11 km per hour. In Arandes, the sun rose at 0608 and was set at 1922. Arandes is expected with a maximum temperature of 26 degrees with a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 26 degrees predicted for tomorrow. A westerly wind will prevail with a speed of 11 km per hour. In Osakos, the sun rose at 0607 and was set at 1919. Osakos is expected with a maximum temperature of 34 degrees with a minimum of 11 and a maximum of 35 degrees predicted for tomorrow. A westerly wind will prevail with a speed of 11 km per hour. In Karibab, the sun rose at 0606 and was set at 1918. Karibab is expected with a maximum temperature of 34 degrees with a minimum of 12 and a maximum of 34 degrees predicted for tomorrow. A west northwesterly wind will prevail with a speed of 11 km per hour. 
in our last weather for today, Unamaruru, the sun rose at 0606 and was set at 1917. Omaruru is expected with a maximum temperature of 36 degrees with a minimum of 12 and a maximum of 36 degrees predicted for tomorrow. A south-southwesterly wind will prevail with a speed of 9 kilometers per hour. And that's it for today. Now, viewers, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our show. If you'd like to send us some news, please don't forget to send us a message on our WhatsApp number, which is 0811-7040. I repeat, 0811-7040. And if you'd like to read more, more stories, please forget, don't forget to visit our website, which is www.erongo.com.na. I repeat, www.erongo.com.na. And now I'm going to have some fun. So please don't forget to stay safe, sanitize. See you next time.